David has consistently excelled in his profession, but as the prospect of an upcoming conference looms, he finds himself overwhelmed with anxiety. With each passing day, David's apprehension intensifies, and he becomes increasingly preoccupied with what he might have overlooked. After meticulously reviewing his work multiple times, he begins to scrutinize each sentence, ensuring its impeccable structure. The mere thought of presenting in front of his superiors sends shivers down his spine, causing him to break into a sweat at the mere contemplation. David is a prime example of someone plagued by obsessive tendencies. Like many individuals with such inclinations, he has certain behaviors that grip him tightly and, in severe cases, can greatly impair his personal and professional life. Fortunately, recent breakthroughs in neuroscience and brain imaging have provided us with insights into the inner workings of the brain during worrisome moments. Armed with this knowledge, we can now embark on a journey to rewire obsessive habits before they spiral out of control. In this video, we will present the invaluable gift of reshaping our minds through Rewire Your OCD Brain by Catherine M. Pittman and William H. Youngs. Drawing from their insightful book, we will offer practical steps to guide you in rewiring your brain and reclaiming control over obsessive tendencies. So, let's embark on this transformative journey together and explore the possibilities of rewiring our brains from OCD. But before we do, we kindly request your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel, Rumble Notes. Defining obsessive thoughts can be a complex task. It requires us to differentiate between worries, anxieties, and the thoughts that become all-consuming in someone's life. Worries are fleeting, varying depending on circumstances or the day. They arise when we ponder what could go wrong. Once we receive an outcome, we move on from these concerns. Anxieties tend to linger longer, but they eventually dissipate with time. Obsessions, however, are a different story. They persist tenaciously, unwilling to let go. Imagine you recently had a date with someone you've been interested in for a while. Instead of enjoying the pleasant memories and looking forward to the next encounter, your mind becomes consumed with analyzing every word and gesture from the date. You obsessively replay the conversations, scrutinize your own behavior, and delve into what it all means for the future. As the days go by, you find yourself endlessly scrolling through their social media profiles, searching for any signs that may confirm or undermine your hopes. Your thoughts wander back to that one time in high school when you stumbled over your words in front of your crush, intensifying the anxiety even further. This obsessive pattern persists, even if the person shows clear interest and reciprocates your feelings. It's a relentless cycle that clings to your mind, tainting the present with a constant stream of doubt and over-analysis. These thoughts, whether inherited or acquired through experience, share a common trait. They linger in the background, influencing your lifestyle and the decisions you make. For someone else, it might manifest as recurring mental images of a violent scene, a haunting accident or thoughts of assault that breed fear. In other instances, Obsessions can take the form of impulsive urges that capture one's thoughts. For example, an individual may suddenly feel an inexplicable compulsion to step onto a high ledge overlooking a bustling city street, their mind clinging to this notion until it becomes an obsession with risking their own safety. Obsessive thoughts manifest in various ways, but they often revolve around familiar themes. The fear of contamination, an overwhelming desire for meticulous order, violence and aggression, sexual violence and impulses, or an insatiable need to avoid making mistakes. Religious obsessions can leave individuals crippled by guilt or driven by an unwavering conviction to act in search of relief. Each obsessive person finds their own way to seek solace, frequently engaging in repetitive actions that transform into compulsions. Do you notice a pattern of repeatedly adjusting the blinds throughout the day or feeling a sense of unease if your books are not perfectly aligned on the shelf? Maybe you catch yourself constantly refreshing your social media feed, even though you've just scrolled through it moments ago. These compulsive behaviors provide temporary relief, but the underlying anxiety remains. Finding lasting solutions begins with addressing the root cause of this anxiety, the very subject we will explore in this video. The amygdala's role in triggering anxiety and obsession. Picture yourself on a sunny Sunday morning, leisurely cycling along a scenic countryside trail, embracing the tranquility of the moment. 
Suddenly, a stray deer darts across your path, threatening to collide with your bicycle. In an instant, your instincts take over, and you expertly swerve to avoid the impending collision, bringing your bike to a controlled stop. What's truly remarkable is that your brain had already made the decision to maneuver before you consciously grasped the danger. Every passing second, your remarkable brain engages in a perpetual process of decision-making, often operating beneath the surface of conscious awareness. Your five senses diligently gather information from the world around you, swiftly relaying it to your brain. What's intriguing is that this data takes two distinct pathways, the cortex pathway, responsible for deliberate actions, and the amygdala pathway, facilitating immediate reactions. Let's take a closer look at this intriguing phenomenon. Imagine entering a dimly lit room filled with the enticing aroma of freshly brewed coffee. As you step inside, your senses immediately come alive, and your olfactory receptors capture the delightful scent, sending this information to a vital brain hub known as the thalamus. From there, the thalamus relays the sensory data to the cerebral cortex for meticulous processing. Interestingly, even though you're aware of the alluring fragrance, you don't react just yet. Why? It's only when the cortex interprets the data and shares it with the amygdala that your action-oriented response kicks in. In this case, your mouth begins to water and you find yourself irresistibly drawn to the aroma, eagerly seeking a cup of that delicious coffee. Interestingly, this thoughtful response follows the cortex pathway, where information is meticulously processed, ensuring a calculated and deliberate reaction. It represents the first of our two sensory pathways. Now, let's shift gears and explore a different scenario. Imagine you are strolling down a bustling street, lost in your own thoughts, when suddenly, a loud, jarring sound shatters the ambience. A gunshot echoes through the air. In this situation, urgency becomes paramount, leaving no room for the luxury of time. Instead of traversing the cortex pathway, the information bypasses it altogether and takes a shortcut, directly reaching the amygdala. Here's where the magic happens. The amygdala, acting as a rapid response center, promptly triggers a cascade of reactions within your body. It commands an adrenaline surge, infusing your muscles with newfound strength and agility, preparing you for swift action. Simultaneously, your eyes instinctively narrow, intently focusing on your escape route. Blood flow is redirected from your digestive system, diverting precious resources to your muscles, enabling you to rapidly retreat to safety. During these critical moments, you may find yourself executing a series of intricate movements with minimal conscious awareness. That's because the information bypasses the cortex, taking a shortcut via the specialized amygdala pathway. This represents the second of our two sensory routes. While this remarkable mechanism evolved to safeguard our well-being, it occasionally misinterprets harmless situations as threats, leading to unnecessary anxiety. The amygdala lacks the capacity to discern nuances and contexts as it operates on ancient survival instincts ingrained over millions of years of human evolution. Its mantra remains steadfast, better safe than sorry. However, Despite the amygdala's limitations, there are ways we can regain control over our anxiety. Although we cannot directly influence the information that bypasses the cortex in favor of the amygdala, we can cultivate strategies to manage our response and find solace amidst uncertainty. By unraveling the intricacies of our brain's decision-making pathways, we unlock a profound understanding of our own cognitive processes. Armed with this knowledge, we can confidently navigate the complexities of our mind and empower ourselves to live with greater peace of mind and emotional well-being. Cortex playing the main role in causing anxiety. Understanding the causes of anxiety is essential in regaining control and effectively managing obsessions. It's not solely the influence of the amygdala. There's an active role we play in triggering our own anxiety. Let's consider the case of Mark who finds himself in a crowded shopping mall. As he navigates through the bustling crowd, he begins to feel a tightness in his chest, and his heart starts racing. Thoughts of a potential panic attack flood his conscious awareness, monitored by the vigilant amygdala through its connections with the cortex. Misinterpreting the situation, the amygdala triggers a defense response, leading to escalating distress and an overwhelming urge to escape the crowded environment. In another scenario, 
Imagine Lisa, a student preparing for a crucial exam. As she sits down to study, thoughts of failure and inadequacy start to creep into her mind. She worries about not being prepared enough and fears the consequences of poor performance. Anxious thoughts consume her, generating an internal turmoil. Though her anxiety is primarily thought-generated, it still holds the power to trigger a defense response, manifesting as physical tension, racing thoughts, and difficulty focusing. Whether it's a sensory input like Mark's experience in the crowded mall, or thought-generated anxiety like Lisa's exam-related concerns, both can elicit defense responses within us. These responses can induce hormonal changes in the body, preparing it for fight, flight, or freeze reactions. In individuals with OCD, the emotional changes associated with these responses may validate their fears, reinforcing anxiety and perpetuating distressing cycles. Cognitive fusion. The tendency to believe in the things we imagine can be amplified by our ability to anticipate and react even before danger is imminent. In many ways, it's a remarkable human capacity that allows us to accomplish great feats, such as constructing skyscrapers or predicting storms. However, for individuals with OCD, these defense mechanisms tend to overestimate the level of danger, triggering an exaggerated response from the amygdala. For instance, a woman with OCD might experience intrusive thoughts about harming her child. What she may not realize is that such thoughts are common, with around 90% of people having fleeting thoughts that make no sense to them. The difference lies in how much attention she pays to these thoughts which reinforces them to the point where she becomes afraid she poses a danger to her own child. By understanding the underlying causes of anxiety, individuals can free themselves from guilt and engage in processes that help manage obsessions effectively. Managing Obsessive Behavior Now that you have a deeper understanding of your body's defense response and how it relates to anxiety and obsessions, let's explore strategies for managing and living a more fulfilling life. Start by reviewing situations when your internal alarm goes off. Recognize that false signals can trigger a defense response. Observe and acknowledge your body's reaction, noting the symptoms. This self-awareness helps divert attention from the crisis, reducing the activation of the amygdala. Over time, you'll learn to see these reactions as normal and less threatening. When you experience panic or obsessive thoughts, try diversion. The mind can't focus on two things simultaneously so replace a distressing thought with a more interesting or engaging one. Engage in activities, call someone, or tackle enjoyable tasks that require less effort. While conscious efforts to pacify your defense response can be helpful, it's important to remember that the response must run its course once initiated. However, you can redirect the excess energy to less harmful outlets. Engage in exercise and outdoor activities to expend that energy. As the energy is spent, the amygdala will signal a retreat, resulting in reduced stress levels. Exercise also releases feel-good hormones, similar to prescribed anxiety medication, providing a natural mood boost without side effects. Appreciate your amazing capacity to contemplate the future, a superpower that can trigger a defense response when anticipating potential problems that may never occur. Bring yourself back to the present moment by actively engaging with your immediate environment. Use your senses to see, feel, listen, and experience the world around you. Incorporate mindfulness practices such as deep breathing, mindful meditation, and muscle relaxation exercises to mitigate defense triggers. If obsessive thoughts persist at bedtime, try reading or listening to a podcast to divert your mind. Visualize pleasant experiences or hold onto cherished memories. As you integrate mindfulness, presence, deep breathing, and exercise into your daily routine, strive to recognize what you can control and what is beyond your reach. Practice acceptance and gratitude for what you have, reducing obsession about uncontrollable factors. By applying these strategies and embracing a proactive mindset, you can take charge of your obsessive behavior, finding greater peace and fulfillment in your life. Rewiring your brain. Understanding the brain's remarkable malleability provides a glimmer of hope in taming its natural defense mechanism. It's fascinating to realize that the brain learns by forming associations between circumstances or objects and the emotions they evoke, whether positive or negative. Consider the case of young Tom eating at a McDonald's with his parents. Typically, 
this would be an innocuous experience, devoid of fear or apprehension. However, let's imagine that on one occasion, Tom was unexpectedly yelled at for innocently rubbing barbecue sauce on his face. This singular event could imprint a negative association between barbecue sauce and the emotion of fear within Tom's brain. What unfolds within the intricate neural networks of Tom's brain is a remarkable process of learning and memory formation. The code representing barbecue sauce travels through specific sets of neurons, while the code associated with yelling follows its own distinct pathway. As these codes consistently fire simultaneously, their association strengthens, entwining the trauma of the event with the sensory experience of barbecue sauce. While this may initially sound disheartening, it actually holds great promise. The key lies in recognizing that firing a different set of neurons associated with delightful objects or events can initiate and solidify positive associations within the brain. By engaging in new activities that evoke positive emotions and repeatedly firing these neurons, you can foster the formation of new neural pathways and structures within your extraordinary brain. This understanding of neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change its physical structure regardless of age, empowers you to embark on a transformative journey. It enables you to gradually reintroduce yourself to your anxieties through exposure therapy, where you confront feared situations or triggers in a controlled and systematic manner. In doing so, you teach your amygdala, the vigilant sentinel within your brain, not to fear what it previously responded to with heightened anxiety. Throughout this process, it's crucial to resist engaging in compulsive behaviors. Succumbing to these behaviors fires the neurons associated with your obsessions and inadvertently reinforces the defense response. Instead, embracing the discomfort and tolerating the symptoms that arise during exposure therapy is essential for effective progress. By embarking on this journey of rewiring your brain, you gradually reshape the patterns and associations entrenched in OCD. Over time, as you persist with the right doses of exposure and repetition, your brain undergoes transformative changes, leading to a newfound sense of freedom and liberation from the grips of obsessions.